What is up, everybody? How's everyone doing out there today? Welcome back to Wildcat MTG, and uh, it is time for the Lost Caverns of Ixalan. We're going to start this off with a draft booster box. Um, I do have some set boxes. There has been some delays with collector booster boxes and, and allocation, and, and LGS is not getting their full complement, if any at all. Um, I know that my local game stores, and we even have a couple of WPN stores here, um, didn't even get their shipment yet, so there's been a little bit of delay on those. Hopefully, I'll be able to get my collector box boxes pretty quickly here but uh, we're gonna start off this weekend with a draft booster box I do have some set boxes as well so should be a good time um, I'll preface this dive by saying you know unlike my other videos where I like to incorporate pricing and, and really have that be a point of conversation when I'm opening up boxes um, we don't do that for the new releases of sets for at least a couple of weeks so really this is just gonna be about the opening experience enjoying the new cards I'll probably go a little bit slower this time around as well but uh, hopefully we'll open up some gas along the way and uh, with that being said why don't we go ahead and dive on in and let's crack some packs so I will say that I'm actually really excited about Ixalan um, I did not get a chance to play like I was out of out of magic at the time during the original Ixalan block so um, I came back in like right as right before uh, Guilds of Ravnica was a thing uh, and so like Dominaria and Ixalan were just getting ready to rotate out of standard and so I like didn't bother to buy any because I was like eh like Pioneer wasn't a format yet. I didn't, you know, wasn't kind of into modern. Like I was just getting back into modern as well. So um, I didn't really bother the first time around. So I kind of missed out on the dino craze. We're even going to do the box top right off the bat. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to getting some big, fancy, stompy dinosaurs. This box topper does not want to comply. And I'm frightened. There we go. I feel like, what do we got going on here? We have a, all that for a Fist of the Suns. I actually really like the art on it. Man, that thing did not want to come out. Uh, Fist of the Suns. Cool, cool box topper. It looks like the Infinity Gauntlet, right? And uh, yeah, it's been reprinted a few times, but uh, I do like the artwork on it. That's neat. All right. Now let's get with the, uh, let's get with the actual set here. There's a bunch of stuff in this set that I really want. Um... Okay, so we start off with, all right, so land, sure, that seems correct. And then we have a foil uncommon curator, okay. Hit the mother load, actually a rare that I kind of dig, so that's an, that's not bad. I think discovery is going to be a heck of a mechanic, so discover 10, pretty good. After that, spyglass siren, okay, uncommons. So these are Japanese packs because of the pull tab, so all this juicy stuff is going to be in the front, and then... Not much in the back, so... Okay. Got it, got it. All right, cool. Um, I definitely want uh, the Osier Talk, the Deep Foundation. That's the white one, the one that makes triple creature tokens. Um, a lot of really good reprints, right? So Cavern is like the most obvious. Cavern of Souls is a reprint. Uh, Resplendent Angel is a really good notable reprint as well. All right, Captivating Cave. I wonder if caves are going to be like a real thing. That'd be neat. Amalia Ben Avidas Aguirre. Uh, didn't quite hit my, my rolling of my R's there, but we have a Vampire Scout. Um, I saw that uh, Goldfish Saffron Olive already kind of posted like the combo with this and the Wild Growth Walker. So Wild Growth Walker, I think, is like when you explore game three and then you just gain here, so you explore. So it goes, it doesn't go quite infinite, but it goes until the point where she hits 20 and then it just, she just board wipes. Kind of, a, kind of interesting. Neat. All right, so, oh, okay, they're uncommon, so we got, a, like, the showcase art here. We've got Bartolomo del Presidio and Master Master's Guide's Mural as the other uncommon, as another uncommon, I should say. What am I going on here? Let's see if I can keep my pile straight. Let's see if we can manage. Basking Capybara, neat Capybara. Seismic Monstrosaur, mm-hmm. Some other fun stuff in there. Neat, okay, all right. Uh, growing rights of Iclamont and Treasure Map. Um, those are those are definitely rares. I would not mind getting copies of. Really good, strong reprints that I'm glad they put in here. Oh, nah, yeah, yeah. So these really, uh, you know, I, again, I know that we get a special basic land in every set now, but these are actually really cool. I, I dig that a whole lot. All right, foil common poison dart frog. 
Rare is a Tishana's Tidebender. That is a card that people are very interested in. Uh, it's a 3-2, three, 3-drop three, uh, three flash, and then basically it allows you to stifle something. And also, while that permanent's on the battlefield, then you can't use any of its uh, abilities. So, interested to see if uh, this is going to see, see some play. Charter Course, good strong reprint. Might of Ancestors and Colossodactyl. It's a 4-4-4-5 four, 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 Reach Trample. That is a... Uh, that's a heck of an uncommon, really. All right, Landmark, Presence of the Ages. Deep Goblin Skull Taker, sure. And Tinker's Totes, all right. Just kind of get a feel for these, uh, for these packs. We'll speed it up a little bit along the way. So there's our equivalent of our token, Promising Vein as the, as the cave. Sunken Citadel. <laughs> All right. Uh, it is also another cave, so it's a rare cave. Add two mana. The chosen uses only activated land sources. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Hermetic, Hermetic Nautilus. Oh, the firstborn of Gishaf. Mm hmm. A little hasty 2 3 that uh, allows one of your other dinosaurs to deal some damage. So there's our uncommons. Inverted Iceberg. Sure. Over the Edge. Pirate Hat. Get their own cool hats. Okay. No mythics yet. I would expect that like most other draft boxes are probably gonna be good for like I don't know what, like four to six mythics in a uh, in a draft box. Got a little treasure token. Sweet looking mountain. That's very cool. And where is a Terrian's journal? I think this card is really neat. Um I, I paused on this card when I was reviewing the set and, and it really stuck out to me. So it's a two drop legendary artifact. You can just tap it to sacrifice another creature uh, or artifact and then draw a card. You can only do it at sorcery speed, but then you can discard your hand and, tra hand and transform the journal. And uh, then it turns into a land and you can just start casting creature spells from your graveyard uh, by tapping the land. So kind of a sweet card. I actually, I, I'm curious as to uh, whether it sees any play or not. Self-reflection. Neat. Good. Uncommon. Volatile Fault. And the Seething Tower after that, Dousing Device after that, and we're into our Commons after that. Interesting. All right. Our copy, Hidden Cataract. <clears throat> I really like the, the land cycle of the caves that allow you to sack the land to discover, which is, uh, I, again, I think that's pretty cool. Deep Root Pilgrimage. Oh yeah, it's the Merfolk enchantment. So whenever one, ever, one or more non-token Merfolk you control become tap, create a 1-1 one, one blue Merfolk creature with Hexproof. Hexproof is... That's not insignificant. Giving, getting, getting Merfolk that are, that are um, you know, Hexproof, that, that's, that's pretty big. All right, Canonized in Blood, Contested Ball Game. I know people kind of like this card as a game within a game. Dreadmaw's Ire. Look at that picture. That looks cool. And Spring Loaded Saw Blades, also a pretty strong card. All right. And into our commons after that. I don't know if there's any commons worth stopping on, so probably start flying through those. <laughs> Dinosaur Token 3 1, sure. Hidden Courtyard, uh huh. Rare is, oh, neat. And it's a borderless version of a card that I really wanted anyway. So this is Echoing Deep. So this is the cave. Uh, this is a card that I was really excited about uh, when I saw it in the set. So you can it enters the battlefield. You can't have it enter the battlefield. There's a copy of any land card in a graveyard. So, you know, right away, the, the, the Dark Depths is what stuck out to me, is putting a Dark Depths depth in your graveyard and then copying that, except for this doesn't come into play with counters on it. So you just get a Merit Lage. That's really cool. I'm happy about that pull. I'll definitely put that up top. Mischievous Pup after that. Lore Keeper, Captain Storm, Co Cosmium Raider. Cosmium is like the, uh, the the resource everyone is chasing after, right? Is that what I understand about Ixalan and the lore for, for this set? Not Adamantium or Vibranium. It's Cosmium. They're different. All right. Hidden Nursery. Mm-hmm. Oh, hey, cool. We have a uh, foil, one of these. One of these... Uh, this is the Hidden Necropolis. Neat. That's a good... That's a nice foil. 
And rare is a roaming throne. Yeah, there is a quality rare. This card does a whole lot of things. 4-4-4-4, four, 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 pretty good. Ward 2, also very good. Enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. And roaming throne uh, is the chosen type in addition to its other types. And then if a triggered ability of the creature, you uh, you control of the type uh, triggers, it triggers an additional time. So you get double triggers from the creature type. That is a really strong rare. Sweet. Malicious Eclipse. Is it a board wipe? Um, yeah, it's like a semi-board wipe. Ooh, and it exiles them. That's actually a really good card. Council of Echoes. Enterprising Scallywag. Goblin Pirate. Yep. All right. And so we get four on commons. Another Capybara. Nice. Yeah. Okay. All right. Still haven't found our first Mythic yet, but we're only approaching the end of the first third of the box. A lot of box left here. All right. Sweet Plains. Neat. Rare is a Sanguine Evangelist. Another another creature I think is actually uh, really, really good and, and may see some play as well. Just makes more bodies. When it dies, it makes bodies. When it when it enters the battlefield, it makes bodies. Clamidus. Clay Fire Bricks. Mm-hmm. And there's our comments. All right, looks like we have three packs left in this first row. I almost forget, like, how many packs 36 really is. Nice map token. Sweet. Promising Vein. Mm-hmm. Rare is a Tarian's Soul Cleaver. So I just played against this in pre-release, and uh, both me and my opponent, my opponent is the one that played it, played it, that's why I played against it. A little underwhelming. Like, I think the obvious comp is you want to, like, look at the one and the two to equip, and, and you know, oh, it's got, you know, Creature Has Vigilance, and kind of compare it to Shadow Spear. This, this card doesn't do nearly as much. Um, it's neat, but I don't think it's, I don't think it's great. Zodic Glyph. Synapse Necromage. Explorer's Cache. And then Tithing Blade. That's a really good comment. It just enters the battlefield, the opponent sacrifices a creature, and then you can craft it to flip it. Uh, pretty strong comment, I think. <laughs> Hunter's Blowgun. Neat. Okay. All right. I'm really happy with that Echoing Deeps. That's a... And I, I like the art, too. I even like the art. All right. Here we go. There's our Swamp. There's a nice little... Ooh, we have a mythic. What is this? <laughs> oh, our first mythic in the box, and it is in the showcase. And it's the green Ozier. It's, it's the green god. So Ozier, Kazlum, deepest growth. I think this card is really good. So it's five for six, five trample. Really good rate there. When it deals combat damage to a player, reveal that many cards off the top of your library. You may put a creature card and or a land card from among them onto the battlefield. So, uh, and then put the rest on your bottom of your li library in a random order. So basically, like, don't let it hit you. Otherwise, things spiral up real quick and then it's a god so when it dies it flips flips into temple of cultivation and you can pay three to transform it uh, back and activate only if you control 10 or more permanents and as a, only as a sorcery i actually think that's really easy uh a really easy condition to meet so sweet first mythic dauntless dismantler stinging cave crawler scampering surveyor caslums uh and that's the uncommons and then we get into our commons yeah that's a that's a mythic i can that's a mythic i can deal with all right, last pack of the first column here. Most cool spirit token. Hidden Volcano. Foil common is a Sun Shot Militia. How about another mythic? Oh, nice. It's a Sovereign Okinic Au. Ahau? I don't know. I probably butchered that, and I apologize. I have no idea, but it is a four for a four, a three, four mythic ward two nope, cat noble. And uh, it does some things. When you swing with it, it definitely does It does some work. You have to keep it around on the battlefield, which is a little bit tougher. Glimpse of the core. Oh, nice. And a rampaging ceratops as the uh, as a borderless uncommon. Can't be blocked except for by three or more creatures, and it's five for a five four. Well, good luck. Good luck with that. Swashbuckler's whip. And lodestone needle. And into our commons. So that concludes the first third of the box. We'll speed things along now. Kind of got a better feel for this. And we do have, we are on the board with two mythics to end that first column. And I think Ozier, I think the, the green god is, I think that's a good hit. All right, here we go. Gnome token, sure. Hidden nursery, yep. Rare is a poetic ingenuity. Whatever, it's an enchantment. A lot of enchantments uh, that just uh, have like different weird abilities. 
Dinosaur's attacking me, you can't create that many treasures, and then, okay, I actually kind of like that card. I'm going to throw that up top there. And Malicious Eclipse again, Rampaging Ceratops, which we just saw in a borderless. Oh, neat. It's only an uncommon, but this is a card I'm really excited about, uh, the exemplar here. So we got our 3 for a 3-3 three, three cat, and uh, locks your opponents out of your, out of your turn, which I am about. I'm okay with that. All right. Wouldn't mind pulling a Gishath as well. That's a card, obviously, you know, not me being not around for the first one. I don't have any copies of. Brass tun Brass's Tunnel Grinder. Mm-hmm. Dusk Rose Reliquary. Confounding Riddle. Bitter Triumph. And Waterlogged Hulk after that. There are some really, by the way, um, you know, I don't I can't stop on every uncommon because you know we'll just be here forever. I would encourage people to go look at the set list and look at the uncommons in the set. One of the things that stuck out to me as, as I was going through the set, I think there is there's a lot of good rares, and of course there's a lot of really good mythics, but there is also some really, really strong uncommons in the set. The Belligerent as a rare, legendary artifact vehicle, canonized in blood. The Zoyas Zoyawas? No, I definitely butchered that. <laughs> uh, justice. <laughs> feel like I got it right the first time and then just proceeded to get further and further away from what it should sound like. There's a lot of interesting pronunciations in this uh, in this set, no doubt. All right, Captivating Cave. Rare is Get Lost, there we go. There's a really good removal spell. People are, uh, people are excited about this as a removal spell. Actually, I think it's really good. I, I think it is definitely going to see play Spyglass Siren, Might of Ancestors, Diamond Kick X, Clay Fired, Bricks after that, and then we are into our commons. So this is crazy. So, you know, Lost Caverns also, we get, obviously, you got our set boosters and our draft boosters and our collector boosters. And after this, we get one more set, I think, before of uh, of this array of, of boxes before we go to the play boosters. So this is like the last standard set. Because the next standard set is the one that's going to have all those. Synapse Necromage as a foil uncommon. Rare is a Molten Collapse. There is a really good strong rare. And I already have a place for this card. So, yep, this I think this right now. And this doesn't mean anything. And again, I, I just kind of going off of the hype machine here. I think this is currently the most sought after, most valuable rare in the set. Uh, Eaten by Piranha is a really good uncommon. Volatile Fault, fault Colossodactyl again. And we are into our commons after that. All right. Approaching the halfway point in the box here. Oh, treasure token. Cool planes. Compass Gnome. Rare is a Jade Light Spelunker. I wonder if this card's good. I kind of think it... I don't know. I, I could be real wrong about that. I'm going to throw it up there. I think it's a card that is interesting to me. All right. Nautilus. Chomp. Explorer's Cache, Spring Loaded Saw Blades again. Yep. And comments. I don't know. What do you guys think? Everyone out there, are you, are you guys uh, excited about this set? I feel like this set, you know, and it's early. We're literally in pre release week weekend. Uh, but I think the set, I feel like the set has gotten overwhelmingly positive reviews thus far. All right, Hidden Necropolis again. Rare is a, there we go, there is a solid rare for us. Very, very nice. Growing Rites of Illamok, a card that really did need a reprint, and um, boy, it is good though. This card does a whole lot of work. There's the there's the front, you can pause and read it if you want. Wall of text, and when it flips, it basically flips into a guy's cradle. So, yep, that's really good. That is really good. That was a good reprint. Helping Hand, Uchenbach, this card is also quite good. Okay. Yeah, I, again, I, I really have paused on the uh, on the uncommons in this set. There's been a couple that made me stop, and I was like, wow, that card's an uncommon? Okay. Captivating Gyre, or Cave. Panicked Althasaur. Hey, our first land of the box, our first man land of the box. That is Restless Ridgeline. I don't know that these are going to end up being valuable, per se, but I'll throw it up, up top. I do think they're going to see play. All right, another Zodic Glyph, Spelunking. Sunborn, and into our commons after that. All right, 
funny. We got stuck on Mythics again. All of our Mythics came at the end of the first column, and we haven't had any Mythics in the second column yet either with just a few packs left. Hidden Cataract. Foil Uncommon Showcase Nikazan, uh, <laughs> Nikanzil? Nikanzil? I don't know. And uh, it's two for two, three. Does a bunch of other stuff. Neat card. Neat looking card at the very least. Kite Sail Larcenist. Actually kind of a cool rare as well. Stinging Cave Crawler after that. Dread Maw's Ire. Tendril of the Myco. Okay. Yeah. Tithing Blade again. Upraid at Common. Nice. Good reprint. Petrify. A pacif a strictly better Pacifism. All right. It looks like we have three packs left here in the middle column. Hidden Courtyard. Yep. Yeah. Mythic is a Skullporn Nexus in the showcase version how sweet is that showcase or borderless version I, i'm not sure what to call that one but uh this is a really really good card as well again i'll let you pause and read it it very much kind of resembles like the great henge does some different things at the end but as far as the base cost and the discount on how to kind of get it into play very much along the lines of henge um also a really powerful card i think as well so cool skull spore nexus Oh, neat. And another borderless uncommon. This is the belligerent yearling. Sweet. And our commons. Okay. So it's interesting. Like I don't, we, our mythic count is, seems average right now because we've got still a column to go, but yet we've hit two showcase versions or one borderless one version and one showcase version. Squirming emergence. That is a pretty good rare as well. Good reanimation spell. Hurl into history. Another Bartolomo de, de Presidio. Glowcap Lantern after that. Sunbird Standard. And into our commons after that. All right, last pack of the uh, middle column. Here we go. Hidden Nursery, sure. Hey, Thousand Moon Smithy. Neat. This is a also a pretty good rare, I think. Let me just kind of creating some space here. Making sure everything's on. There you go. Okay, uh, Thousand Moon Smithy. Also a really good card. Also flips into a legendary artifact land. I will let you guys pause and read that just because I don't want to sit here and read nursery rhymes of text. But it's a good card. All right. Benthosaur. Deep Cavern Bat, Scampering Surveyor, Inverted Iceberg, and along with the rest of our comments. Cool. All right, last column here. I feel like we've hit a lot of the good rares like that I would have wanted to see, which makes me happy. And uh, I feel like so far the Mythics have been pretty kind to us as well. Sweet Island. I want to see what that looks like in foil. Pal uh, Palani's Hatcher. Mm hmm. Market Noom. Another Deep Cavern Bat. Geological Appraiser. And we are into our commons after that. I'm going to switch these around. There we go. Going to be easier that way. Okay. Here we go. A little treasure token. Sure. Hidden Courtyard. Because why not? So you can have, you open one of these boxes, you have all the hidden things that you need. Gold Fury Strider is a foil uncommon. Sentinel of the Nameless of the Nameless City, actually kind of a rare that I like as well. Three for three, four Vigilance is pretty good starting stats as well. All right, another Benthosaur, so, hey, Sorcerer's Spyglass. Good downshift to uncommon, but a really good card still. Glowcap Lantern, Jade Seed Stones, and into our comments. Okay, hopefully we're good for at least two more mythics. Like, less than less than four would be a bummer. Uh, five, I think, would be great. Five or or above, I should say. All right. Hey, nice, Malcolm Alluring Scoundrel. This is a rare that I quite like. Two for a two one flash uh, flyer, and uh, yeah, he does some stuff. I think I, I you again. I feel like you need to build like proliferate around that card, but. Still a sweet card. Huh. Showcase, sure. Glyph, Grasping Shadows. Okay. 
It's also a, uh, it's like a red removal spell. It's like two damage or the power of the <laughs> power of your greatest power dinosaur. I'm like, well, that card seems like it's going to be pretty good in, in dinos. Nice forest. Rare Unstable Glyph Bridge. This is actually a good quality rare as well. Not sure how it quite blends in, you know, in a standard that has a bunch of really good uh, removals already, but... Yeah, another one of the uh, Kutzels, nice. I'll sort that out later. It is uncommon. Okay. Really happy to get that glowing rights. Wouldn't mind seeing a, uh, a treasure map. Hidden Necropolis. Souls of the Lost. Probably a pretty good rare. Kind of have to build around it, but it still does. Uh, it still does a pretty good amount of work. All right, looks like we got about six or seven packs left. Come on, Galta, captivating cave, foil rare, preacher of the schism. That is a pretty good card in its own right as well. 2-4 Vampire Cleric for 2, uh, that for 3, that has Death Touch and uh, swings and rewards you regardless. You get something out of either way, and it's kind of based off of life total. A, a regular rare is Kellen, the Daring Traveler. So we get Adventure. That's weird that we get an Adventure. Uh, Kellen just doing his thing, running around, making mischief. Soul Coil Vam uh, uh, Viper, also a really strong uncommon. Pit of Offerings. I think this card is kind of good. It's a, it's a cave and it comes in the battlefield tap, but you get to exile three cards from graveyards and then it taps for the mana of any of the exiled cards. That's that's strong. Cavernous Maw. So it kind of doubles. Like Not only could it be a tri-land for you, uh, but it also exiles, you know, probably you're, you're probably going after your opponent's threats. All right, map, mountain. Rare is a bedrock tortoise, also another card that I quite like as a rare. That's pretty sweet rare. Staunch crewmate, dawn runner, chupacabra, ecro. And we are into our commons after that. Okay, got five packs left here. These uh these mythics they chose to they chose to hold out to the very end of all of these columns huh hidden courtyard sure second of the main lands that is restless anchorage anchorage away and then we've got defossilized really good reanimation sure justice again the great door lattice and our commons. Four packs left. Come on, Mythics. Listen, we've, we've done well with the Mythics we've pulled. I would just like to see some more Mythics, is what I'm trying to say. Sweet Island. Rare is a treasure map. Nice! Okay. Good, good pull. I don't have, like I said, I don't have any copies of this. I wasn't playing Ixalan, so I always wanted a treasure map or three. <laughs> uh, I would like multiples of it, but that is a good start for us. Treasure Cove. Very nice. Vanguard Rose, Bloodthorn uh, Thorn Flail, Glowcap Lantern, Twists and Turns, also a quality uncommon. And our commons after that. Okay, so we hit a Growing Rights. Like, we hit good reprints in the rear. We hit a Treasure Map. We hit a Get Lost. We hit a, a Molten Collapse and an Echoing Peeps. Now we just need a few more Mythics. And this box is going to be, I think, above average at the very least. Frilled Cave Worm as a foil common. Rare is a Abuelo's Awakening as the rare. War Scribe, Swashbuckler's Whip, Whip, Battle Glyph, Dowsing Device. Okay. Well, two packs left. The Mythic Count I'm officially worried about because three is... That's low, especially for, for 36 packs, right? I mean, I know it's, it's balanced out draft versus set, but still... Hey, we got a borderless card. So we had a borderless restless anchorage. All right. I didn't actually know that these came in borderless. I guess I should have known that. That makes sense. But throw it up top. It's not going to be, you know, the same place as the uh, molten collapse of the deep echoes, but that's okay. Uh, sure. And our commons after that. Last pack. 
<laughs> All right, come on. Hidden Volcano. Foil Uncommon. It is a mythic. It is Vito. Vito Fanatic of Aklazots, uh, I think is the best way I can say that. Not the mythic I was necessarily looking to see there, but it is a mythic. It at least brings us to four. Vito's cool, though. Uh, Vito, you have to really build around, but he's neat. Rune Lurker Bat. Charter Course. Good, again, quality, quality uh, reprint there. The Seeding Tower in the Showcase this time. Our Creature Fungus. Fungus Among Us. And our Commons. All right, so... I think the mythic count is like a little bit lower than I would have liked to have seen. I think four is, is still average for a draft box. I think it's kind of typically between like four and six. So it's kind of on the lower end. But out of our four mythics, I definitely think the Skull Spore Nexus and that Borderless Treatment and then Ogier and uh, Chasm and in the uh, Showcase are good quality mythics. Um, we did get, you know, what I would consider to be two of these sort of chase rares, if you will. I'm also really happy with the treasure map and the growing rights. Quality removal with get lost. So I think we did really well in the rare section overall. Um, as far as draft boxes go, you know, this is my first go around with this. We'll see what this looks like. But I think this is at least a, probably a, a, an average to a slightly above average box. If we'd hit like one more mythic and it had been one of the really, really high end ones, this box is a banger. As it stands, I think it's just pretty good. So anyways, that's it for me today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, do me a favor. If you're not subscribed already, hit the subscribe button for me. Hit the like button for me. And by all means, drop me some comments. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much, everybody. And be well.